God is good. And all the time. You may take a seat in his presence. How many of you know that angels are encomp un un encompassing us? That, that there are angels standing behind every one of us, on our sides and in front of us. And in you, see angels are standing next to you, but Jesus is sitting in you. You didn't say amen to that. Amen. amen. This morning I would love you to, to, to make your amen very bold. Make your amen very bold. Because your life is being transformed. Even as heaven is kissing the earth, even as we have merged in the spiritual realm with the heavenlies, there's something taking place. There's a transformation from sin to righteousness. You're not saying amen. There's a transformation from sickness to healing. There's a transformation from poverty to prosperity. Someone say, I prosper without any excuse it is courtesy of Jesus Christ Amen this morning I'm privileged to share the word of God with you I'm going to try to be as brief as possible the theme of the month is what? abundant grace say abundant grace how many of you know what abundance is? someone can call, call us something abundance what? plenty? overflowing? ahead overflowing? what else? Excess. Ooh. Someone say excess grace. Excess means that you have enough but you get extra. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> Amen. And this morning my, 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 my sermon that I have, uh, <laughs> I was talking to Elder Sari about this because for almost two weeks now I've been dealing with this particular message and it just dawned on me that there's a cleaner. Say the cleaner. The schoon marker. Someone says the schoon marker. I like the Dutch much better. Because cleaner is more, you know, sophisticated. But when you say schoon marker, yeah, schoon marker. Someone say the schoon marker. Now, when I was much younger, oh, where's Depot? When I was much younger, um, I came here to the Netherlands when I was 15, right? And um, I've done all sorts of jobs. Um, I've worked at the Albert, Albert Kuyp Mart. I was selling socks. <laughs> you guys didn't know, I'm not wearing socks today. <laughs> I was selling socks and I was very good at selling socks. I've worked at the meat factory before. Meat factory. Like super cold, a small boy, I was around 17 years. I would wake up at 5 a.m. Because then I didn't have my permanent stay. I had a temporary stay. So I, I had to work short. <laughs> and um, I would go to the meet. I would wake up very early there. They pick me up. And in the car, you see, all, only old people. Ghanaian, Surinamese, etc. And then you see the small boy sitting there in the corner, in a bus. We go there very early, 5, 4, 5 a.m. thereabout. And we go into this freezer. And we will be, oh Jesus. So God has been good, eh? Hmm. Yesterday I ate KFC, but now I remember when I was, I was carrying chicken, raw chicken, putting it in the freezer. I've worked at Schiphol before. When I was in Schiphol, I was doing order picker. I was working at the Schiphol retail op, uh, shop. Um, I was doing all these things. But one of the jobs that I can clearly remember is when I was doing my cleaning job. Right? I was doing my cleaning job. And now, I, the interesting thing about my cleaning job was that I love the job. I love to clean. Because I had a whole floor, I had to clean, and after that, my, uh, my salary was good. Because I was young, but I was earning much more than those wearing, working in Albertine, uh, McDonald's, I was in the McDonald's party uh, here. Thais Bezorgd. Hey, that's, <laughs> yeah, but interestingly, my cleaning job was making more money than all these other jobs. Yet I was ashamed. I was very ashamed of the job. Why? Because in my culture, we would deem the cleaning job. We often at times we would say, "Oh, our parents came to clean. We have to do much better, so we do better jobs." So, I, as a small boy, was conditioned 
to think that my job was not good enough. People of God, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter where you start from. You may start in a manger, but at the end of the day, you'll be sitting next to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with all authority in your hands. So I was cleaning. And then the interesting thing was that I was so ashamed that when I would come out, I remember around 4.30 there about in Ferenc Stewardberg. It was a nice office. There was no one in the neighborhood. But because of my mind and my conscience thinking that I'm not doing something that is so nice, even when after cleaning, when I'm coming out of the door, I'm looking around. Is there someone around? to see me. Then I would walk to the metro station very quick. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> I'll, at the Ferencudic metro station, I'll be rushing to hoping that the metro will come fast. Why? Because I was afraid that someone will come and question what I do. And then I would have to li- like, you know, so for the Ghanaians around here, you might know this. A lot of our Ghanaian church mothers and fathers, when they see you, hey, now what are you doing here? Where are you going? You too, where are you coming from? <laughs> they will ask you this question and you'll be very uncomfortable because then I would have to explain. I would say, ah, but don't you go to school? Oh, don't you do this? The youth here, have you experienced that before? When people have been questioning you, you yourself, you are even trying. But the little you are trying, people don't appreciate it. They, want, they have high expectations. The cleaner. So as I began to think about it, reminisce, <laughs> when I was thinking about this, I had an epiphany. Epiphany is there, wave your hand. <laughs> I had an epiphany, a realization, a moment of realization that, oh wow. So Jesus Christ, who was seated in his throne, came all the way, not from Ghana, not from United States of America, all the way from his throne in the heavenlies, to come down, born in a manger, being spat on, being kicked, being um, um, and lashed, blood oozing out of his body. All that he was doing was to come and clean away my sins. God bless you, sister. And I was overwhelmed by this because what in my perception was a lowly thing was in fact the greatest thing that a man could ever do. And this morning, our verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says that for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know the grace of our Lord. Say, I know the grace of our Lord. That though he was rich, <laughs> yet for your sakes, he became poor. That through his poverty, say through his poverty, you might become rich. Someone say, I am rich. And then I was referring to our previous text last month, which is Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 13. But the 14, I love it. It says that he gave his life to, he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin. Say, I am free from every kind of sin. I am free from every kind of stain. Stain. He gave his life for every kind of sin to cleanse us and make us his very own. Totally committed to doing good. Our sins are gone far away. Jesus has taken my burden sins away. (laughs) Once I was a sinner saved by grace. (laughs) Once we were sinners Saved by grace Oh my sins Are gone far Far away Jesus has taken My burden sins away Oh my Once I was a sinner But I'm saved by grace Once I was a sinner Saved by grace Somebody clap your hands and celebrate Jesus 
Now, thinking about all this, there's an instance that happened in the Bible that I want us to look at very carefully, just as you can roll the, the text. So the text is you can open your Bibles to John chapter 13, verse 1 to 15. John chapter 13, verse 1 to 15. And as we watch the text being read. John now, I think the video that we watched was quite uh, prolific, right? And um, the main thing that you have to understand here is that in those times when you would go outside, in, in the streets of Jerusalem, it was not as tired as our streets. They were wearing sandals. So even if you take a bath in the morning, by walking on the street, streets, your feet will become dirty. Right? And before you would come for the supper, you would have to make sure your feet are cleaned. And the interesting thing is that the, first, the very first verse, what we have to note in the very first verse is that it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew the hour had come. He knew that his time to be on the cross was near. And then he said, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The first thing you have to note is that you serve what you love. You serve what you love. Some of you love music, so you serve music. Some of you love ladies, so you serve ladies. All your money is going to McDonald's. Some of you love the Bible, so you serve the Bible. All you do the whole day is you are constantly looking at the Bible, trying to find new stuff because you love the Bible. Some of you love, serve God because you love God. How many of you love God? How many of you serve God? See, some of you, you love God, but you don't serve God. Some of you love people, but you don't serve people. But what God is telling us is that for God so loved the world that he gave his only... For God so loved that he came to clean our sins. He came to serve us because he loved us so much. Now, the next verse that I want you to pay attention to, the next slide, he says that the bond servant... Jesus knew that the Father had put all things. He knew who he was. He knew that he was, he was the king of kings. He knew that the Father had put all things uh, under his feet. And then he says that he had come from God and returning. So he took off his outer clothing. Someone say took off. Now the, the, the typical Greek word for took off is apot apotithemi. Apotithemi. But in this particular verse, it is not apotithemi that he's referring to. It's referring to tithemi, which is a bit odd. You see it in a few verses in the book of John as well. And here in tithemi, you see that tithemi, the normal apotithemi means that to put off, aside or away. But tithemi itself means that to lay down, to make or set for one's use. Then the word I want you to pay attention to is that he lays down his life for us. He took off his life. So all that we watch here, it was just a, a picture of the cross. Him laying down his life for you because he loves you. Now after he had taken off his garment, what was he left with? He was left with an underwear, right? You all saw it. Now the underwear in the Greek word for the underwear is chiton. Now, chiton is something that the slaves or the servants would wear when they are going to serve food. Can you see the picture of Jehovah himself? In, in, the Bible says that he, he became a bond servant. That we might become righteous, that we might be saved. Praise the Lord. Am I speaking to someone here? Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, he says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. We know that Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He is God. Did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Can you make yourself of no reputation? Can you lay yourself down for people to walk on you only for a purpose? How far are you willing to go to get someone saved? And being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even death on the cross. The cross was not a small thing. Praise the Lord. 
Now the interesting thing is that after he had taken off his garment, da, he put on a towel. Now this towel, the Bible says that the towel is really, it's, it's a linen cloth. Now linen is often referring to righteousness. Why? Because if you look at Isaiah, he says that he put the towel, he girdled it on his loins. And in Isaiah it says that, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. And faithfulness the girdle of his reins. So what did Jesus do? He picked righteousness. He put righteousness on his, on his waist. He bent down to wash your feet. Your dirty feet. Some of our feet are very dirty. You've not washed it. You, when you bath, you don't wash the underside of your feet. He washed our feet. But what did he wash our feet with? He didn't wash our feet with Omo. Or what, are, what, are the, uh, f- f- what, what do we normally use to wash? Dove. He didn't wash your feet with dove. He washed your feet with righteousness. Praise the Lord. He washed your feet with righteousness. And so when righteousness, and the Bible says that after he had washed their feet, he wiped them away. He wiped it away with righteousness. Your sins are gone far away. Do you know where your sin is? Your sin is here. You are here. Your sin is here. It is far. Because it has been wiped away over there when you were here. Jesus used righteousness to wipe away your sins. Say, I'm righteous. Say confidently, say, I am righteous. Now, in Christianity, there's a lot of counter narrative. Dipo, you know there's a lot of counter narrative in, 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 in Christianity, right? In Christianity, the Bible says that the least shall be the greater. The world says that the greater is, is, is more than the least. The, in Christianity, the Bible says the first shall be the last. How can the first be the last? When the world knows that the first is the first. The last shall be the what? So we see here the master who is supposed to be washed. The master who is supposed to be served. The master who is supposed to sit as a boss, like all of us do all the time. Now stooping low, taking the position of the servant to wash the servant's feet. In those days, when, when it was only the wives that, I mean, if your wife loves you so much, your wife takes care of you. So in those days, some of the ways the wives would wash would take care of their husband is they will wash the husband's feet. Like some ladies do for their husband, pedicure. Sometimes my wife wants to use the thing to clip my toes. Because my toes are not so nice. You know? But the Bible tells that husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church. We, we, it's counter-narrative. To love your wife means you are serving your wife. To love someone in the church means you are willing to serve the person. We have to get back to our true identity. Praise the Lord. Now the interesting thing I love about this particular story we read is that we see the grace of God at its greatest display. Where's Junior? Junior, is Junior there? Junior, can you come? Can you get me Junior quickly? Oh, Junior Obey. Where's Junior Obey? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. You see, the grace of God, it's abundant. The grace of God does not, cal- it has appeared to what? All men. It does not calculate that these are Christians, so I'm going to make the rain fall on the Christians. It falls on everyone. And we see here that Jesus Christ washed everyone's feet, even the one who was supposed to betray him. He washed his feet. The Bible says that the devil had already spoken to the thoughts of Judas a lot of us not only are we waiting to be served we have made our order and we are waiting to be served you come to church you make order please let me sit here I don't want to sit in front let me sit here bring this to me do this for me do this every time do for me do for me do what are you doing for God and yet still despite everything that you do God shows us what common grace please tell me about common grace um, praise the Lord. Um, the concept of common grace is the concept that 
we all, um, as the Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death, that is actually what we all deserve. The Bible says, if anyone says that he's without sin, that person is a liar. So that is what we all deserve. But yet, God has supplied us with grace, and that is for believers and also for unbelievers. Everyone here, everyone on earth, benefits of grace. So in the morning, if you wake up and you see the beauty of the trees, if you can breathe, that is goodness that you didn't deserve. And that is grace that is supplied to believers and unbelievers, and that's why we we call it common grace. That doesn't mean that it's normal, but it means it is common in the sense that it is common to unbelievers and believers. Amen. I had to share this because he shared this with us during the men's ministry, and it was so powerful. He was saying that even the sun, when you wake up in the morning and you see trees, the leaves moving like this, it is grace. Even your job, it is grace. Because we don't deserve all these things. People that don't even serve God, they don't deserve all these things. There are people that are rich. They don't believe in Christ, but God still blesses them. That is, that is, that is who God is. Amen. God, someone say, God is good. Look, look into yourself and say, God, hey, you are too good, eh? <laughs> now, what I love about Jesus Christ, just as I think you are far behind. What I love about Jesus Christ is that He's the only one that can lay down his life. And after the Bible says, he picks his outer uh, uh, robe and he puts it back on. He lays down his life for us and then he picks up his life again and he puts it back on. It is in the Bible. The Greek word says lambano and it refers to the fact that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Praise the Lord. And what I love about, it says John chapter 10 verse 17, 17 and 18 says, Therefore my father loves me. This is what God loves about Jesus. He said, therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me. Tell someone, no one takes your life from you. If Jesus is living you, no, nothing can take your life from you, eh? Oh, you thought the witches in your, in your village, ah! How can this Christian be afraid of chicken chasing you in your dreams? If chicken is chasing you in your dreams, in your dream itself, don't wake up before you pray. In your dream itself, you, you stand up and say, hey, what are you doing here? Okay, let me go and cook you. <laughs> so Isaiah said this, come now, let us reason together. Let us think together. When we come to church, we come to reason together. Because sometimes the devil is playing games on our minds. Our spirit man is perfect. You are perfect. You are clean. You are clean. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as... You are... <laughs> So I said, come now, let, let us reason together. Though you, your sins are like scarlet. Scarlet is like danger red. They shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You're not a sinner. You are righteous. You just sometimes like to pretend like you're a sinner. Stop pretending. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. You start, to, you start pretending like you are sick. So don't be a hypocrite. You see, the reason why we have the tendency to pretend, the reason why we have the tendency to pay attention to our flesh, those who made Bible Academy, you missed this. We have the tendency to, play, to pay attention to our flesh is because when we, when we got, where's my phone? My Samsung, please. Who has, who has Samsung S8 or something old, older? Who has an older Samsung here? Someone, hey, you people use iPhone? No one has older Samsung. Okay, anyway. So I used to use a Samsung S8. Then I upgraded to S21 Ultra. S21 Ultra. Emphasis. I used to be a sinner. Then I upgraded into a child of God. Right? But the interesting thing is that when I upgraded to S21 Ultra 
from time to time, there is a firm wire that is sent to me. And I have to update. Because the old system is old. And the interesting thing is, you might be an S21, but it can be very slow if you are not updating. You guys are, especially the MacBook people, you know it. Sometimes it just goes off, right? And then there will be some lines in front, sometimes white screen, black screen, different, different types of screen. If you, if you don't upgrade, if you don't update the drivers, just go to the next slide. If you don't update the drivers, the, the, the system will become slow. You are still a Christian, but you are slow. You have to update. The Bible says the updating system of the Bible is that you renew your mind. You renew your mind every day. You renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? You renew your mind with the word of God. The more you read the word of God, you get new updates, new updates, new updates, new updates. So then you, re you realize that on Bible Academy, you've read the Bible all your life. But then all of a sudden you realize that you will judge angels. And your status quo changes. That, that is how it works. That is how it was. Yesterday, last time, Dipo came to rehearse and even Dipo can play very good keyboard, but he always wants to update himself. He wants to upgrade. Don't be a Christian with bugs. A Christian with virus. A Christian with <laughs> bootlegged programs. You go here, you go and listen to this. You go and listen to this. Prophet comes here, you go here. Prophet here, prophet here. Prophet. Don't be that. Go to the word of God. That is where the system download is. And download everything that concerns your life. The Bible tells us that and according to the law, almost all things are purified by the blood. So you are perfectly clean. And it says this. In Ephesians, and having shod your feet... You see the food that has been washed? You have to keep it <laughs> with the preparation of the gospel. You have to keep your feet in the gospel. That is what it's about. What is the gospel? That Jesus Christ left his throne, came to clean your, your mess, gave you a message, and turned your life around. He changed your shame into a story. And now you can sing, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Listen to this final verse. Let's go to the last slide. It says, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time? The only benefit you, re you reaped was death. When you were slaves to sin. Those things result to death. But now that you have been set free from sin, and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holy, holy, someone say, I am holy. And the result of holiness is what? Eternal life. And this brings us to the verse of the month, which says that, for if the one man's offense, for if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more, say much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will do what? Reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. This morning, I only came to tell you one thing. That your sins have been wiped away. Now you are born to righteousness. Now you are holy. And so now you reign in life. You reign in life. Someone say, I reign in life. Declare it one more time. Say, I reign in life. 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 And from now onwards, let us be enthusiastic in doing good. Let us enjoy serving. Because the Bible tells us that the greatest in the kingdom is a servant. You serve to be great. You humble yourself, humble yourself, and he will do what? Lift you up. And let us, by serving, we serve by exhibiting the fruit of the, which is love, which is 
joy, which is peace, which is patience, which is kindness, which is self-control. And against such things, long-suffering, I forgot that one. Against such things, there is what? No law. You are free. Someone say, I'm free. Let's be on our feet. Someone say, I'm free. Someone say, I am free. Someone say, I am free. This time we want to lift up a prayer. And I don't know what things the devil is telling your mind. But we want to stay in the spirit. We want to pray. Everyone knows the things that they are struggling with. It may be an addiction. It may be um, your school. It may be anything that is preventing you from seeing the, the truth. I don't know which fact is disturbing your mind. But we want to shift our, our minds from fact to truth. The weak say, I am strong. So this morning, everyone with a serious prayer, clap your hands and pray concerning everything that is, is, is disturbing your life. Come on, open your mouth and lift your voice and pray, pray, pray. Clap your hands.